Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for Agent Insiders and taking a look. Here we are mid-year in July and what we, we are seeing here locally. So we have our panelists here joining us today, and we're really focused today in looking at inventory shortages, what's happening with rates. We know that there's supposedly a rate hike that we should be expecting here this week that we're anticipating but really looking at those opportunities that exist out there. So as we put in our introduction for today's uh, class that we're doing, there are 60,000 agents nationally that have left the industry. And looking at that locally here in Northern Nevada, there are approximately a little bit less than 1,000 agents that have left the industry. So really, what does that mean? That means that there are opportunities, a lot of opportunities. So really the focus today is highlighting and identifying where those opportunities are and how we can capitalize on them in order to keep that momentum going, that forward growth continuing and being top of mind with our spheres in keeping our businesses, not just as they are, but flourishing. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over and talk with our panelists and what you are seeing right now in the market our summer started a little bit later, and it feels like we have some momentum that has picked up here in the past couple of weeks. I agree. Nice. I've had a lot of listings coming to market, one right after the other. So we are seeing some more inventory, but um, that definitely doesn't help take care of the massive inventory shortage that we do have. But it's good to see more stuff coming on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely agree with Kirsten. Just lots of lots of new listings coming to market, just one after another. Some good ones too, good quality yeah. ones as well. And then I just put one that I've had on the market for four months and it just went into contract over the weekend. So don't give up on your listings either. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I've just been getting a lot more calls from buyers that are ready to get back into the market and start shopping again. Um, I just closed with a Gen Z and she felt like it wasn't going to be possible for her to be able to buy a home. Um, so it was nice to get her to the finish line and she was excited and she noted that the media is always so negative about how Gen Zers are never going to be able to purchase a home of their own. So we just really need to change that narrative and share the successes that we're having. Well, I, I think right now, seeing more inventory coming on is extremely positive, but we still have such a shortage. So for the buyers that are, are sitting on the fence and waiting, it's not helping them by waiting because just as quickly as homes are coming on, they're also coming right back off. Mm -hmm. Agree. That's and true. I, I think that people are getting, you know, away from the whole interest rate thing. I mean, yeah, it's a factor, but if you can afford it right now, you know, make the move before things change, um, you know, whenever that's going to be in the next year. And um, because then there's going to be that much more demand and you'll be paying that much more for a price for home. So mm -hmm. I feel as though there's less of a shock value with interest rates anymore because we aren't going from in the threes to seven. You know, we, we are hovering right in that same realm that I feel like buyers are becoming a little bit more numb to the fact this is just the way interest rates are and home ownership is possible. So it's more about finding a way to make that happen versus just shutting down and closing that door. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think last month we joked that um, the market has been changing weekly and I feel like we're still in that realm. What do you guys think? It's kind of maybe not as a, a extreme changing weekly, but it is. And before it was driven by interest rates, but now it's just, in, it's driven by, I don't know if it's the, buyer's vacation schedule and, and interest rates and just um they're it, it's just still that unknown factor but when they're like well nothing's really going to change let's just do this mm -hmm. yeah I think a lot of buyers you know 12 months ago I mean I think people suspected that the market was going to crash and now that we've hit that point where that's not happening and now prices are appreciating again it's like okay well I better you know things are not going to crash. I better just get in the game. Yeah. 
Yeah, I agree. They were waiting for this big event to happen. Nothing happened. And now they are probably kicking themselves that they didn't get in the game in fall or winter because that's when the real, I saw a lot of opportunities at that point. Um, and then talking to the inventory that's coming on and off the market, there are still opportunities out there of properties that have been on the market longer where that is a good time to try to negotiate with those sellers um, because they want to move. And I think that we always just have to keep in mind that, is that people are always going to be wanting to buy. They're always going to need to sell. And we just have to remember that and not get all spooked with the media and what their narrative is. And educating the buyers, our buyers, that um, just because it's been sitting, it doesn't mean there's something wrong with the property. So right. go take a look. Could have just been like what we just talked about. They timed it on a week that was an off week because yeah. it is changing so weekly, back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. And there are some houses that just don't fit people's needs, right? Like everyone wants something different. So it's like there are homes that, you know, don't work out for others, but could very well work out for you. And I'm a firm believer too, even when people list, like sometimes people just miss it. They miss it. And then it sits there and then they don't even realize they missed it. So even just as agents going back through thinking about buyers that you know that are pretty active right now and and maybe shooting them a list of Hey, have you, have you, do you, did you happen to see these six homes? Do any of them spark your interest? And yeah, maybe you'll go response. Yeah, I saw all six or maybe like, oh no, I missed one of those or whatnot. And that's another strategy to kind of re-engage your clients right. with this off and on. I think one of the things to remember too, is that school is going to be starting here soon. So there is often that push and that's where we need to take advantage of this timing right now of people wanting to get moved and settled and in place for the start of the school year. So I feel like right now we're in a really tight opportunity just on the timing of schools. But with that, Washoe County has expanded for being able to, and offering variances for school this year. So I think there's a huge advantage with that where people are not stuck having to stay within the constraints of certain districts um, as they had to in the past, where now they have a lot more flexibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 It's definitely crunch time right now. Yeah. Raquel, do, you know, do you know a lot about that? Um, because I know there was some, when it first was announced, but it was still, are they actually following through with giving a lot more or is it tightened up more? I know they're not going to be there. It's going to be kind of more of a lottery style, but. And so what I've read about the the schooling is it depends on how much room the school has in order to be able to absorb those variances so it's not just totally a free-for-all but it's important in getting those applications in and they are granting those variances depending on what the population looks like for the school and what room they have to not have it be overcrowded I also so, read that they are really looking at the staffing to make sure that there's adequate staff in place to accommodate, even if they have the room, um, but they have the staff available. Yeah, absolutely. Because at the end of the day, the class sizes are going to be dictated by the, the amount of teachers that they have to be able to teach those classes. Yeah, yeah. it would be interesting to see like what school is going to be getting the influx of students. And I'm, I'm just like wondering, is it mostly like high school for the sports or? Right, you know, right. And why did they choose now to implement something like this versus before? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, I, I had read the original article, but then started thinking about it. And just like Raquel said, I still think it will be difficult because they're going to have to leave a certain percentage of room for people that move in that neighborhood and that is owning. So right. it's still pretty similar to what they were doing before, but they're just making it more, I don't know, or politically. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Here to <laughs> be more. Yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. definitely good for us as agents to stay on top of stuff like that, though, because I had somebody from out of state ask me what about certain schools, and we can't really speak towards uh, what schools our preferences are, 
but we can direct or talk about the school ratings and then also share that information about the variances. I know that that we had um, some questions that came about in the Washoe Valley area because you are so close to the South Reno corridor as well as to Carson. So there is some flexibility there, regardless of being zoned for Washoe County, that in Washoe Valley, there can be that option for the Carson City School District as well. But yes, yeah, so we're in crunch time with the start of the school year and people looking at that. But as Shandy said, people are always going to be moving and life events take place on a regular basis. So providing that education to your clients so that it doesn't turn into this whole fearful experience about what's happening at the market in addition to dealing with the life event, I think is truly, truly helpful. Kirsten, I know you've been, been helping a good friend of ours and really doing a lot of that educating around what is real and what isn't real and helping them with that process. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I mean, just helping navigate it all. Um, there's so many moving parts to it. And the other interesting thing that will be interesting to see how this plays out, we got a late start. So will this feed into, you know, September or October? Like, you know, how long is this going to go? You know, I mean, if the weather, you know, stays nice, I mean, people might have a summer, you know, yeah, um, yeah. frenzy for a little bit longer because winter was so long. So we'll see. That will be interesting because historically September is the lowest amount of sales, but the highest inventory number of the year usually. So that will be interesting. Yeah, that will be. July, but July has been a little different too. July well, I think for fine. us, in a comparison well, from year to year, knock on wood, we haven't had any fires yet. Yeah, I was yeah, thinking don't that. Don't even bring that up. Like, don't even don't say anything. Not <laughs> like all of us. <laughs> my husband said that yesterday morning because the high wind. He's like, uh oh, uh oh. And I mean, but that usually knocked out of all of August. So hopefully we're good. Yes. I'm really hoping that if we can avoid that, I think for our real estate market, it's going to be a very positive end of summer and beginning of fall for us because it really has been a long time that we've had the weather like we've been able to have for the summer. And it's been so, so great for people coming here that are looking at moving to this area, looking at relocating. It really is so much more advantageous staying like this. And I think that that will have a direct impact on what we see for the remainder of the summer going into the fall. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I was curious what sort of appraisal um, stories <laughs> we have to share um, and what we're seeing on our appraisals, if we're noticing anything or we're surprised by anything. I don't have anything surprising. I was going to say, yeah, knock on wood. Haven't had right. anything exciting right. to share. Yep. So th I, I we did have one where the appraisal came in that was lower than what the sales price was on the home, not significantly, but it was lower and they were able to come to an agreement to work through that. But I think that there is really on your part as agents, that education with your sellers and being realistic with the pricing and not overpricing the home and having it under deliver in those appraisals. Well, that's a, com a conversation that I am having frequently with my sellers, you know, just pricing Absolutely. it at market. You don't yeah. want to have, you know, those conversations down the road, you know. Totally. I had one come in 5,000 less or uh, more. Well, no, less than what the offer was. Thank you. <laughs> Reverse. And it was just, I thought it was funny because it just seemed like you couldn't get us there. Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't, you couldn't stretch 5,000. Yeah. It was just, it was the first for me. Usually it's a little more to go, but I mean, it worked out for everybody, but it just was kind of interesting. Sure. Have you guys seen people over asking and then asking for almost the difference of over ask back in their um, inspections? Oh, no. 
Yeah. I've seen it um, over ask and then a credit, a seller credit. Yeah. Do the rate. Yeah. For the rate, rate buy down. Costs or... So it's yeah. almost like they come in to win the listing, you know, obviously at higher, but then they. Oh, have... They do it up front. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. really really popular like maybe six years ago seven years ago it was super common everybody did it even with the repair allowance but now it leaves it wide open yep yeah so I've, I've heard of a couple and I've had one happen I also talked to an agent out of Colorado and she said it is happening like almost yeah. every deal over in Colorado and I was like whoa okay well we I've only you know had one and then yeah, heard of a couple others, so it might become a thing. Well, and it was just the thing we talked about when with the repair stuff. I mean, everybody feels gridlocked. They're paying the most. They want it perfect. Mm -hmm. So it goes back to well, they were gonna accept and they listed it at this price, so we could probably get this. It's even a mindset mm -hmm. thing too for buyers. Yeah, yeah. Which then you go into the whole scenario. Then you do inspections up front, and then if they do come in and offer you over, then do you say, "Well, I've disclosed everything. You know that it needed a new roof or water heater or whatever," and you guys went ahead and still made this offer, knowing that this mm -hmm. was, you know, yeah. on the table. I don't know. It's just some negotiation task tactics, I guess. Or just make sure you accept that backup offer if you had multiple offers to start with to get that, put the pressure. Yeah. Okay, well, go with other person, you know. Right, right. Yep. So are you seeing those multiple offers coming in? Yep. Good ones. Yeah. Are you guys seeing a lot of buyers? I've list, I've just happened to list a lot, like 500 and under lately. <laughs> but a lot of those buyers need credits of some sort. I swear like every single one, it's, a, it would go multiple offers, but it's like every buyer yeah. needs some sort of closing cost credit. So it's like, we're that's how we're negotiating. Like, okay, who can come over more to offset, to get us back to, you know what I mean? We're like playing this game. And yeah, I, I, like I had a all buyer. I've been doing for like four weeks. <laughs> Yeah, I had a buyer that was similar to that. And finally, I was like, okay, this isn't going to win us anything. We didn't win one, a multiple offer situation. And so I was like, okay, we need to be in at the price that we can qualify without asking for the credit, you know, so. Yeah. yeah. I was just curious if that was me or if that's kind of trendy right now. I had one buyer that that was the scenario. It's just it's about a few years ago where it it, where the 500s were the 300s or that's what it used, used to be a 300 range so it's just the bump up and with interest rates it's a bigger deal right and let's be real anything under 500 needs some work so they need some cash to fix up some stuff too so that comes into play as well mm -hmm. so what are some of the conversations that you're having with your clients that have that real constrained price point in trying to, to get them to broaden their horizon of where they're looking. Because I feel as though the, the, like that 500,000 and under, it makes it limited, right? On, on what's out there. So how are you addressing that from an inventory shortage standpoint? Welcome to Sparks in the North Valleys. <laughs> <laughs> Are you branching out into some of the other outlying counties a little bit more? Uh, no, not as much. I think it's client dependent, but not really. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. what they're having to do is look at a condo townhouse situation mm -hmm. versus a single family home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think the people that are looking at in other counties, they that's where they start. They're already they already yeah. educated themselves or the first phone call. Mm -hmm. that way I agree I think when I'm in that situation they're open to Carson they're not really open to going much further than that okay. and to be totally honest I refer them out if they're going to other if they're going out of the Reno Sparks Carson area so I'm not the mm -hmm. best at and what about the luxury market and what you're seeing right now in the luxury space. Because I, I feel as though I'm seeing those homes sitting on the market a little bit longer right now. I feel like I, there's more, more inventory. 
yeah. in, in the luxury market. So mm -hmm. over a million, two million, like there is more inventory there and it definitely is taking longer, mm -hmm. but deals are still happening. I think it's yeah. just, you know, coming down to the right fit and the right house. Totally. Yeah. For, for me personally, I feel like the buyers in that category are super active right now because there is more to choose from and they're not phased by the economy right now. Right. And they have the time to make the choice. Totally. To find the house. Yeah. And so, the image. So it gives them a little bit more options. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. I do feel like they're, people are taking more time with their decisions. They don't feel pressured to hurry up. I mean, unless you're under 500,000, right? Um, but I feel like people are taking their time and they're not as worried about maybe losing out on this one or, you know, really, really thinking it through, talking to the lender, talking it over, that kind of thing. And if are they lose out, it's not meant to be type of thing. Exactly, yep. yeah. Are you seeing your clients that have homes that are in that, that lower interest rate bracket being more open to moving on to that next level house and not so tied to holding on to their lower interest rate? Or do you feel as though those homeowners are still clinging on to the property they have at the lower interest rate? I think there's some still clinging on. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? Why would you? Unless you absolutely yeah. had to move, why would you? Why would you go? Oh, that's fun, but I'm happy where I'm at. Unless you had to, move. Mm -hmm. you had a divorce, had a kid, had like there's people are moving because they have to right now. Yeah, yeah, there has to be the motivation behind moving, you know, in mm -hmm. order to make that move. Or the last two years before were just because they could. For fun. Yeah, just for fun, basically. Mm -hmm. And the time, because of COVID, they had more time to think about it, do it. There was lots of other right. things. So it goes I, back to a lot more life event related reasons, which we know still happens. So with the life event related reasons being a focus on part of your strategy and part of your communication that's going out to your clients so that they can be educated of what is happening in the market in these times for making those moves. Mm -hmm. And I think that people understand the sense of urgency on acting now, knowing that, like, I think they understand the bigger picture. When interest rates do start to drop, that there is going to be a flood of people coming to the market. So I think yeah. people, we've educated people enough that I think they get that now. Mm -hmm. Right. And also, we probably won't ever see rates in the threes again. So when the rates start getting into the fives, that's going to feel very exciting for a lot of people. And mm -hmm. they're also aware that, hey, the threes is out. The fives is looking pretty good. So it's just well, going to. I remember in February when we dropped to 599 and there was this huge scurry in the market. And again, multiple offer situations, all of that kind of stuff. So yeah. And then in April, <laughs> it definitely yeah. right. was. <laughs> Yeah, Don't they say, <laughs> yeah, exactly. What do they say? It takes 45 days or 60 days to create a habit or something like that. So it's like people are so short, you know, so short minded, like we're all wrapped up in what's happening right now. You forget. A year ago, I was buying a condo that my oldest son was living in in college. So it was like a second home. And I was whining about my 6% interest rate. I'm not whining anymore. Yeah. <laughs> You're just like all those buyers yeah. <laughs> that we deal with all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We we bought an investment in April of last year, and our interest rate was just over five, and I was so pissed about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I paid more for my daughter's house than for my house at one time, and I wasn't worried about the interest rate, but I was more focused on the price, right? Like, how could I be buying her a more expensive home than my house? And I mean, you know, it's just all relative to what your mind is fixated on at the time. And right and now, that's where all of you so say that's where you guys come in because that's part of the counseling that you do with your clients. So you take off the realtor hat, you put on your counselor hat, and working through the process and helping them in sorting out their mindset 
and breaking things down for them in a black and white of what is happening right now in our market. Cause you can't compare it to a year ago. You can't mm -hmm. compare it to two years ago. Right. No, not even six months ago. No. I mean, we are truly therapists and slash realtor, not realtor slash therapist. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I had a good girlfriend just look at me. It was probably eight years ago, nine years ago. And she looks at me and she goes, oh my God, you're like a psychiatrist. Because <laughs> we, we are, it's just like working through all the things. Mm -hmm. And that's why the saying goes, a realtor should have to buy or sell a house every two years just to remember what it feels like to go through it because it's a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. it is. Yes, that process most certainly. And I honestly, again, we talk about all the time, the partnership with the, the lenders and the lender community is so essential as a key role in your jobs and what you are doing, not just for the clients to have their good relationship with the lenders that they're working with, but you to have those relationships as well so that you can help guide your clients if maybe they're working with a lender that's not really a good fit for you to feel like you have all those resources with your counseling hat. Now you're also the resource and helping connect all the dots too. Yeah, the resource hat is is a lot too, because you know, they do reach out to you for anything and everything. Yeah. And, and remind them that you can that they can call you down the road for people too. Mm -hmm. I just had a client that closed like four years ago and she's like, I wanted to get your opinion on solar panels. And it just it's just like that's the feel good clients, you know, that they can come to you as a resource for the value of their home and, and any thoughts. And again, that's why it's so important to stay educated on every topic that we possibly can, because there's always something to be learned, something you can learn. <laughs> so what are your plans that each one of you are doing to kind of gear up for this next third quarter that you're focusing on just to end out your summer with a big bang? big boost in business and just positive feeling all around. Mine's just getting the listings to market and getting them sold. Like I just can't do it fast enough. Yeah, I agree. Just putting, put my head down and doing more of what I've been doing all year and just, you know, writing it out and not, and not neglecting it when you're in the thick of the busy. Yeah. That's my, uh, true, to be truthful, um, the summer, uh, the personal stuff, the weekend fun, the just, just kind of trying to stay above water, live in the fast lane. That's kind of been it lately. So I kind of want to, as soon as August 1st hits, it's slowing down a little bit as much as that means. And I'm ready. Cause I need that structure back. I need to go back to the basics right now. I'm just been flying by the seat of my pants, truthfully. Yeah, I'm going back to basics of just doing some farming in neighborhoods where um, I would love to have some listings. Uh, so I'm doing like a CMA a day for the month of August just to target certain homeowners and then just talking to my sphere and just connecting and back to basics, basically. Yeah, I think those content, always content. Those CMAs, I think, are so eye-opening for people, especially because there was that anticipation that we, we had mentioned that there was going to be this crash. And so people are waiting for this crash where we're seeing the appreciation happening in homes in our area. So those CMAs, I think, are a great way to just provide something of value mm -hmm. to those individuals. And that, in turn, helps with just that education of really what's happening in our area. Jandy, yeah. are you doing that to pass clients or do you, how, how are you doing that for the month of August? So I'm doing it, I'm targeting certain neighborhoods and also to, um, not to pass clients, but people who I've met at open houses and things that have expressed interest of maybe selling in a year or two. Um, so just kind of staying in touch with those people and I'm not doing a full CMA, it's a partial CMA. And like the hope is to set that appointment to go preview the home and have a good conversation of what the process would look like and hopefully answer any questions they may have. Um, 
And then my brokerage, we're opening a new office in the Mount Rose area. And you've probably seen it over by MoFos. So we're going to be having like a large grand opening and, you know, just like inviting, just trying to get in front of more people all the time. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Good job. I love, I love the one a day in August. Go get yeah. it. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> I've had more requests lately for farms focusing on next sellers or people that have had 20 plus years of home ownership because yeah. we are seeing that aging um, population uh, and desire to move out of homes that require a larger amount of upkeep, larger yards, and wanting to just scale back. That's those 55 and over communities have become so in- incredibly desirable. Yeah. They're beautiful too. They are. I would take any one of those homes in the Regency. Anyone. Well, we have a little bit to wait. (laughs) Yes, I remind my husband now that he meets those qualifications. I don't. (laughs) Don't let him forget it. Yes, no. (laughs) I rub it in. Trust me. (laughs) Uh, all right, ladies. Well, do you have any other little words of wisdom for this month that you want to add in before we close out today? Thank you for those that came. I know July, well, for me, has been a lot. So we appreciate you guys hopping on. Um, it's it's hard in the summer and you guys are still staying focused. So give yourself a pat on the back. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Yes. And I'll be sending out this recording. I have a list I have six agents that reached out to that wanted to have the recording sent directly because it is July, it is summer, and then people are traveling. So yes, thank you all for taking the time and joining us this afternoon. Okay, and Megan, I'm sending you positive vibes for your showing that you have in 15 minutes. This is going to be the winning showing. <laughs> yes, yeah. good luck. I know. Thanks. And Shandy, <laughs> feel better. <laughs> yeah, Shandy. Bye-bye. Bye, ladies. <laughs>